Robo Master, my name is Berkey Batobi, and hey, welcome, thank you for clicking on my video. Every year, I t something I like to do, and it's been a while, is talk about my adventures, my teams, the, the groups of Pokemon that I chose to use in my experiences. And I decided rather than do a number of these videos scattered over last year, I'd save it up and I'd tell you all of my teams of 2019. How much do I actually play Pokemon? I'm sure there's been a point throughout this channel's history where I've actually researched Pokemon more than I've actually just jumped in and played the game. And last year was a big year for me. I actually nearly played through every single region and not on purpose, just because I was enjoying it and I moved on to the next one. So tell me about what teams you used in the comments. Have you ever done anything like this? I, I try to have quite unique teams if I can help it and do interesting things and have a reasoning behind choosing, you know, every single Pokemon. And yeah, I'm just gonna go through and I guess, I guess tell you the context of all of my 2019 teams. And by the way, if you wanna see more videos like this, please do, you know, leave a like if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. I try and upload twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays, T for Toby. Every time that you leave a like, every time you watch a video to the end, that watch time, it helps out the YouTube robots. It, you know, it helps them push my videos to new people. And obviously that means, new people and more people get to see them. So thank you and let's start, let's go through chronological order of the teams as opposed to like the order that I played them, but the regions. So starting off with Kanto, I did one Kanto run through last year and that was I was kind of wrapping up my Pokemon uh, Let's Go Eevee playthrough. That from the year before, from 2018. And you know, it was only a little bit, but I was kind of just, yeah, wrapping it up, starting the year by playing the Kanto games. Pokemon Sword and Shield weren't out yet. They weren't even announced. So this was the latest thing. And I decided that even though you get your partner Eevee at the beginning of the game, I didn't want it because I doubt we're gonna be able to transfer the partner Eevee and Pikachu to Pokemon home later. So I just thought I'd bite the bullet and pretend that Eevee isn't even on the team. Starting off, I caught a Bulbasaur quite early and Bulbasaur was my starter. I think Bulbasaur is possibly my favorite of the three Kanto starters right now. And it was nice to get hold of it early, you know, totally wrecked Brock's gym with it. And then when it hit level 16, I hit the B button on evolution. I was just like, no, I don't, I don't want to evolve it. And uh, I basically finished the game and still haven't evolved it. Yeah, I thought having just a little Bulbasaur, I think it'd be really cool, just like Ash does, doesn't evolve his Bulbasaur. I think I thought that'd be nice, quite nice. So I started off with Bulbasaur. Pretty early on in Viridian Forest, I stumbled on a shiny Caterpie, my first shiny in the whole of Let's Go. So obviously I had to catch that. And I actually had a shiny Caterpie back in Pokemon Crystal version. It was my first ever shiny Caterpie. My first ever shiny Pokemon outside of the Red Gyarados, and I decided, hey, this is this is that Caterpie. This is my golden boy from Pokemon Crystal. Brought back to life, so I'm gonna catch it. And of course, I leveled it up to a Butterfree. So we got Bulbasaur and Shiny Butterfree, followed up by Gyarados. You can get uh, for 500 Poké Dollars a Magikarp in Pokemon Let's Go as a gift Pokemon, and I thought, go on, men. Let's get this thing to level 20, which, let's face it, in Let's Go isn't that hard, and let's get Gyarados going. Gyarados, Shiny Butterfree, and Bulbasaur. Next up, I thought, well, look, this is Let's Go. Let's take some advantages of this Kanto run through that I wouldn't get in Leaf Green, Fire Red, or Red, Blue, Yellow. So I traded a Marowak that I caught for an Alolan Marowak, and that was the next team member. Gotta jazz it up, gotta jazz it up, gotta keep it as original as possible. And with that in mind, I also transferred over a Meltan from Pokemon Go, because this is the only game that you can adventure with a Meltan if you want. And I did that part way through the adventure. To kind of round off the team, there is a Pokemon I've been wanting to use since the Alola Adventures. Since Sun and Moon came out, I've always been like, oh, I really want to use Slowpoke and Slowbro and the Shelda line, and I have had the chance to use Slowbro. So I was like, let's get a Shelda. Where do we get one? Oh, deep in the Seafoam Islands. It's actually going to be kind of a pain, but I did get one and I did evolve one, and so Koyster was the last member of the team. Now, I believe I didn't really get much further than Blaine's GM. I just kind of got bored of the Let's Go run through. So this was the final team and I transferred it over to my uh, my main copy of Let's Go uh, Pikachu, planning to transfer them to Pokemon Home and they will live in the Hall of Fame in my heart, but not the actual Hall of Fame in the game because they didn't get there. Next up was my Johto adventure. And this is an adventure that I did with my lovely girlfriend, Phoebe. We decided it would be kind of fun, like if she played Heart Gold, I played Soul Silver, and we just played alongside each other. And we preset a roster of Pokemon that we were allowed to catch, so there wouldn't be any crossover. We pre-selected like, hey, this is our roster of 20 Pokemon we're allowed. And we're not allowed to communicate with each other about the run through, apart from when we beat a gym leader or a rival battle, and then we have to battle. And whoever wins gets a point. And at the end, the winner is the person with the most points. 
points. And given that there's a lot of gym battles in the Johto games, twice as many, there was a, well, there was a lot of battling. Anyway, we did both start with the same style to Pokemon, but I decided to make our teams different. I wouldn't evolve mine. So at the end of it, Phoebe had a Typhlosion and I had a Cyndaquil that I called Ruggle after my cat, Rug. So uh, that evolved into Quilava, but I didn't evolve it any further than that. I thought there might be some advantage to not evolving it early and getting some extra moves on it, but uh, no, that wasn't the case. I just got wrecked. Phoebe's Quilava destroyed my Cyndaquil a number of times. Quite early on, I also got hold of the Onyx that you trade for Bellsprout called Rocky. My intentions being to evolve it into a Steelix, but that never happened. I also got a Zubat that I called Crobat for when it evolves into Crobat, because you know, I'm like really mature for my age, so Crobat. As my like counter to her Typhlosion, I've never used a Politoed before, so I got one and I called it Hypnotoad, which is a Futurama reference. And we had pre-decided that she would get Raikou and I would get Entei. So I got an Entei called Borga, which is kind of a nickname for one of her friends. And then at the end, I got a Lugia called Ken because she got Ho-Oh. And you know, yes, usually I wouldn't adventure with this many legendaries on my team, like two legendary Pokemon, but this was all out war between me and her. And ultimately I won by a single point. It's a close game and we've actually just started our Diamond and Pearl run through doing the exact same thing. Hoenn. I play Hoenn every single year, pretty much for one reason at the moment. I'm still trying to get that Pichu from Pokemon Box, and you need to transfer like 2,000 Pokemon over, and I cannot be bothered to sit there and catch 2,000 Pokemon with Ultra Balls in a row on the original Ruby or Sapphire. So I sort of do run-throughs, I'll catch a batch of 30, do a bit more of a run-through, catch a batch of 30, and last year I was finishing up a Pokemon Ruby run-through. I think I started it right at the beginning of the year. I'm kind of looking forward to going and playing again. Maybe I'll do Sapphire next time. And while last Last year I could have sworn Blaziken was my favourite Hoenn starter, now it's Swampert, I really really love it. So I started with Mudkip, got Swampert, and Swampert was actually the first starter Pokemon I used on Pokemon Sapphire when I first got it. So I thought let's go for a more classic team, I got a Hariyama, which was one of my first Pokemon the first time I played, Gardevoir, again that was one of the OG Sapphire members that I had. And then just kind of like a bulldozering through with these three Pokemon. I then later on got hold of Absol, which I know a lot of people love. I've never really used it before and it was great. I loved using Absol, I would absolutely recommend it. Towards the end of the game, I did just kind of think I want to get this thing done and added Groudon to the team. And then I got Relicanth and added it to the team because you need it for the post game to catch all of the Regis anyway. You need to have a Relicanth. So I was like, I'm going to get it and I'll, I'll use it, you know, on this team. And specifically, I caught it with the Dive Ball because you have to catch it underwater and that felt right. I also got my Makuhita earlier in a Premier Ball because that's a Hoenn, like that was new in the Hoenn region and I just wanted to kind of get that nostalgic feeling, I guess. Sinnoh was one of my favorite run-throughs of just ever. I always loved playing Sinnoh and I always loved playing Pokemon Platinum. That's what I did here, and because I love Torterra so much, and I always pick Torterra, I decided to go a different route and have both Piplup and Chimchar. I traded over a Chimchar for my Diamond version. So the end team already had Infernape and Empoleon on it, and I'm pretty sure that the Sinnoh starters are my favorite starters ever. I love all of them, I love every stage of the lines, and I love all three Pokemon pretty equally now. Even Torterra is only like fractionally above the other two. They are it's just such a good group of starters. Again, going for that nostalgic feeling, the first time I played Pokemon Diamond, I got a Luxray, so this time I was like, yeah, it's been a long time since then, let's get a Shinx and evolve it up. Lucario joined the team because, I, I don't know, I, I have used Lucario a few times before, I try to tend to use different Pokemon, but... I just kind of had a spare slot on the team and thought, yeah, all right, let's go for Lucario. But the one I'm really happy with, the one that I'm super, super stoked about was Gligar. I've never used a Gligar before. I've never used Gliscor, Gliscor on like an adventure team before. And one of the big differences between Pokemon Diamond and Pearl and Pokemon Platinum is there's this kind of whole post-game roster of Pokemon that are only available in Diamond and Pearl in the post-game but in Platinum are available in the main story. I kind of wanted to make the most of that playing Platinum, so I got hold of a Gligar and I got hold of the, uh, I guess the Razor Claw, I think it is, that you used to evolve it, or Razor Fang? Razor Fang. That you used to evolve it as early on as possible, and Gliscor was just OP. It was my favorite Pokemon, and it, like it's now one of my favorite Pokemon. I recommend if you've never used a Gliscor before, use one. I also grabbed Magnazone, which was kind of a fun, weird little addition to the team. Again, I wanted to make the most of it, but I didn't spend a lot of time with Magnazone. Honestly, most of my battles were fought with Gliscor, and then, when I was done with it, I transferred it to Black 2, and did the whole Black 2 tower so that I could get hold of the shiny Gibble at the end of it, and now that Gliscor is level 98. Pretty much I did the whole thing with Gliscor. It was wicked. Recommend it, 100%. 
Unova. We're now five regions in, and I know Sword and Shield is coming out, so after this I've only got like two more regions and I've done the whole thing. Um, and Unova was done in a very interesting way as well. I started with Oshawott, which I named Blue Heart because I thought that sounded piratey. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Started with Oshawott. I don't have a particular favorite for the Unova starters. I don't love the Unova starters. So I actually traded myself over a level one Bufalon from another copy of, from another version and uh, kind of treated Bufalon as my starter. And I really like Bufalon. We've got good hair vibes going on between us both. Anyway, it started with Oshawa and Bufalon, and then I decided uh, when I was in the desert to catch a Daramaka, which I called Hot Piece, because of, you know, like, Hot Piece of Poo, which is part of their Pokedex entries. Again, real mature stuff. That, of course, became a Darmanitan, and while I was in the desert, I caught a Yamask, which I called a Mummy. Your Mummy, because it's like your mum, but also your, it's a mummy. It's a, it's, it's a, a Cofagrigus. It evolved into Cofagrigus. Anyway, that was part of the team. I've never used one of those before. And then I got to the part of the game where if you then backtrack on yourself the moment you get Surf, you can get an egg that has level one Larvesta in it. And I've never used Volcarona on an adventure team, and that was something I really wanted to do. So I named it after one of you that was on Twitch watching me at the time as I was streaming this, um, called Lava Burn. I think Lava Burner is the the name of the lovely viewer and Lava Burn was the name of my Larvesta. I evolved it up into Volcarona, it became a core part of the team and then when I went to do the post game I had one slot open on the team and in the post game of Pokemon Black and White you can catch another Volcarona so I then added that to the team as well. I had a team with two Volcaronas on it and that one was called Sundad after another one of you who was watching on Twitch. So Sundad and Lava Bird were two Volcaronas. It was a very interesting way of doing it. But um, yeah, I really like that team. Very original and very interesting. At this time, I just want to say sort of like RIP to three Pokemon that I'm treating as members of my adventures that haven't really had to, the chance to have a good adventure. Back in Johto, I went shiny hunting for a Noctowl and I really wanted to do an adventure of Virtual Console or Johto uh, Pokemon Crystal version with catching a shiny Hoot Hoot on Route 1 and using it as my main Pokemon throughout the adventure. A uh, Chikorita that I wasn't particularly interested in carrying through the game and I just nicknamed it Awu, like U-W-U. I wasn't gonna use it. And then that Chikorita pretty much helped me slay like 4,000 Hoot Hoots and I still didn't find the shiny. So instead I did the shiny hunt on another version of Virtual Console, I got the shiny Hoot Hoot, evolved it into a shiny Noctowl, but then I was not feeling doing another Johto run through. So a Woo and the shiny Noctowl ended up going to uh, Sun and Moon because my plan was, hey, let's do a run through of Sun and Moon or Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Let's do the Alolan adventure with these Pokemon. And joining them was a shiny Wimpod called Ya Boy. And I thought, great, shiny uh, Glycopod is one of my favorite Pokemon, shiny Noctowl is one of my favorite Pokemon, and I've got Uwu the Bayleaf, and then I could just never get into doing the Alone and Adventure. So they are kind of sitting in Pokemon Bank, waiting for an adventure, and I'll find a place for them. Speaking of Alola and Kalos, I opened up a new save file of Pokemon X, and realized that I don't think I like Pokemon X and Y that much, so I just didn't do it. And as for Alola, I tried that run through. I spent last year filling out my games collection of all of the Pokemon games, and I got hold of a copy of Ultra Moon with someone else's team on it. Uh, they had the Pokemon Bank, Incineroar, Decidueye, and Primarina, the three starters. And I was like, cool, they're halfway through the game. I will pick up from there with these three Pokemon as my main teammates. And again, just couldn't get into it. Too many dialogue boxes. So sadly, Gen 6 and 7 were skipped, but Gen 8 rolled around, of course, with Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. And given that the games came out in November, I think it's pretty impressive that I finished two run-throughs before the year was up. Let's finally tell you what my teams were for those. So if you've watched the Let's Play, you'll know that in Pokemon Sword, I had Kerjack, the uh, the Grookey. It just started as a Grookey, evolved, of course, up into um, Gorilla Rillaboom. Quite early on, I caught a Rookidy that I called Snow after Jon Snow because it's like it's a it's a it's a crow, it's a raven. Jon Snow, Game of Thrones. He's a it, anyway. It doesn't matter if you don't like Game of Thrones. But the point is, I caught that, and then I was like, oh, maybe I'll go for a Game of Thrones uh, theming named team because at the time I hadn't nicknamed Grookey yet. So I got hold of a Nicket that evolves, of course, into Thievel, and I called that Egret, which is another Game of Thrones character. Snow ended up actually leaving the team, but before then, I got hold of an Applin that I called Ramsey because Ramsey Bolton. And Game of Thrones does a very bad murder when there's a, in a scene with an apple, and that's it. I got hold of a Roly Coley that, of course, evolved into Colossal. I called that Hodor because he's, you know, a big guy, and that's what Hodor is. I tried a Galarian Zigzagoon that evolved into a Linoon, but that didn't really work out. I tried a Coughing because I wanted to get hold of Galarian Weezing. Wasn't really feeling that. 
I did get a Toxel that of course evolved into Toxtricity, and I totally broke the Game of, Th Game of Thrones naming by calling it Froggy, as in Froggy from Sonic Adventure. And then I got a little cute snom that I called Zoidberg, because I think it looked a little bit like Zoidberg. Another Futurama ref reference, and that evolved in, in the post-game. It didn't evolve until the post-game into Frostlass. No, it didn't. Into Frostmoth. Frostlass is a totally different Pokemon. Oh man, this video is getting very, very long. I can tell I'm getting kind of drained. This coffee, I need more. I needed a refill. Doesn't matter though, we're on to our final team, Pokemon Shield. So at the end of Pokemon Sword version, you get hold of a level five Charmander. It's a Gigantamax Charmander. And unless you're getting one in a raid den, that's the only way you're getting a G-Max Charmander. And I thought level five, great. Let's trade it over and let's use it as a starter alongside my second favorite starter from the region, Sobble. So I had Sobble and I had Charmander. Of course, these both did eventually hit their final evolution, although I took a long time to evolve Sobble and a long time to uh, evolve Drizzile. This is just because I wasn't sure if I liked the look of Intellion and I wasn't sure if I even liked the look of the middle stage evolution, so I really took my time evolving them and let them stay in their smaller forms for a longer time. Obviously, G-Max uh, Charmander, I evolved straight away. And and this time, rather than rushing through the game and rushing through the wild area, I took some time and I did some raids and I got hold of a Togepi. And Togekiss was a pretty useful member of the team. Also, so was Stuntank. Another Pokemon that I've never used before that I was like, cool, let's try that out. Going through my adventure, one of the Pokemon I really wanted to try out was Dreadnought, and uh, I caught, I saw Tootles, obviously, from the early roots, but I'm just not interested in Tootles as a Pokemon. In fact, I think it's one of the worst designs of the generation, and I will link to that video below if you want to check it out. Um, but yeah, I didn't like Tootles, so I did catch a Dreadnought once you could first catch Wild Dreadnought that were already evolved. Very rare I will catch a Pokemon that's already evolved, but yeah, Tootles just seems kind of pointless to me. I got a Dreadnought. And then I went back to the wild area and entered a raid for a Gigantamax Corviknight. And it's the only Gigantamax Corviknight that I have and I, I, I took it on with AIs and we managed to beat it and so I got to add it to my team. Completing the team. And now really there's only two more Pokemon to talk about of last year that were very important to me. In Pokemon Shield, once I hit the post game, it was of course nearly Christmas time and I wanted to do a little Christmas thing for my girlfriend for Phoebe and so that was breeding Sobble until I could get a shiny one for her. Once I told her that this was actually something I was doing because I didn't want her to shiny hunt a Sobble, she told me that she had something for me and sent me a shiny Applin called Pom. I immediately evolved it into my preferred evolution, which is actually Appleton and because I only got to use Flapple and Sword, I was like, okay, well now I'm gonna use this Applin as a starter and make it an Appleton at like level one. So Appleton and my third run through of Pokemon Sword and Shield with Score Bunny as the alternative starter because I haven't used that yet. That run through has begun, but won't be finished until sometime this year. So I didn't want to really include it with the list, but I thought it was important to mention Applin. And that is it, six or seven run throughs of the game. Kanto, Johto, Hoenn, Sinnoh, Unova. And then yeah, two Galar adventures. That's seven run throughs of Pokemon. Given that there's 12 months in a year, that's, you know, not quite a run through a month, obviously. I run through of a game just over once in every two months. And you know, at the moment I'm playing, at the moment I'm playing my Pokemon Pearl run through with Phoebe, I'm playing through Pokemon Shield again, with the Appleton, and I'm sure I'll start many more adventures. So tell me, what teams have you been using and what would you recommend that I use in the comments? Of course, when you leave a comment, when you leave a like, it just helps share my videos out with more people. Feel free to check out some of my old My Pokemon Team videos. I'm sure they're very different to this one. It's been a while. Thank you for watching, and of course, so high Pokemon Masters. This is Ash Ketchum. You just watched a video by Bird Keeper Toby. That makes you a Pokemon Master. And a particular Pokemon Master thank you to all of my big patrons this month, including the Nerd Therapist. Thank you.